excited about today? What? Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, can you guys stand here feet, please? Our first service of 2020. We've been saying it week after week, we've been getting so prepared for this. This is going to be, I'm, I'm not lying to you, I'm not lying to you. This is going to be the best year of your life yet. But, but there's something that you got to do for that to happen. I don't know about you, but I do not want to miss the, del like, the delivery of what's happening, happening from heaven. I, I don't want to miss it. And I don't want you to miss it. If you are in position, you will be able to receive breakthrough in so many areas of your life. I'm talking about things this year. I see things that have been held up over you. There's been like things that have been held up. You've been waiting. You've been waiting for release, waiting for breakthrough. Who's been there? Right, 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 you've been there. You've been waiting. It's like things you've been praying about. And it's almost like it's been held up. The Lord is saying this year, those nets are breaking. Amen. They are breaking this year. Yeah. We are getting into our series of how to take off in your purpose. Yeah. You, this is what I want you guys to do. I know we have schedules to get busy. If you can make it for the next four weeks, I promise you, you will never be the same again. If you can make a commitment to be here during this purpose series, I, I promise you, God has given us literally a blueprint from heaven on how to take off in your purpose, how to find your purpose, how to find out why you're here, what God has called you to do. And God is going to give us the keys on how to move in it today. Um, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of myself. So we're going to get into this. I love that. I love that graphic, by the way. How to take off in your purpose. I love it. We're going to go to Genesis 2.15. You can you stand up, please? I want to read this with you guys. We can read it. We can look at the screen. It says, It says, Then the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper that is comparable to him. And out of the ground, God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air. And he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that's what, what was, what's its name? So Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was found not a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. He slept really good too. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he had made it to a woman, and he brought her to the man. Woo. The name of this message is God has it prepared. He has your purpose prepared. It has already been prepared. You don't have to be anxious today. You don't have to be worried about this year. You don't, you don't have to stress out. What am I going to do in two years, three years, five years from now? How is this going to happen in my life? How's my career going to take off here? What's going to happen with my kids? What's going to happen with my grandkids? You know, what's happening with my house situation, where I'm living at, where I'm moving to? God already has it prepared. I need your help on that one. God already has it prepared. I'm going to say it again. Because a lot of us, you know, this, this, the, the, the country that we live in, in Western culture, is, whoo, it's an epidemic with people who are struggling with anxiety. There's, a, there's an anxious just breakout that is happening in this nation. Because people don't understand. God already has it prepared. Already has it prepared. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the word today. 
We thank you, Holy Spirit, for meeting us where we are. Father, I thank you, Lord, for using me as your vessel. I pray that you would speak through me, Holy Spirit. I pray, Father God, that you would speak to everyone where they are in their lives, Father. No matter what they've been through, no matter what they've gone through, no matter their battles, no matter their giants, no matter their situations, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would give insight to them, that you would heal them in their brokenness, that you would comfort them in the areas that they've been crying out. There's people in here that have been crying out alone, crying out. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to give them insight on what's going on and how and how to tap in into the purpose that you have for them. Move today, Holy Spirit. Move today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Prophet Donnie. Man. The prophet. You guys know he's a prophet? Amen. Tell him to prophesy. He'll prophesy. Prophesy. He'll prophesy. All right, we'll get into this thing. All right, the first thing that I want to say is that God already has your plan. He already has your future figured out and prepared. Okay? But the first thing that I want to do today is that I want to underline and I want to break down what is purpose. Like, what is purpose? In this culture today, you know, we've gotten confused these two words, and that is purpose and destiny. Everyone say purpose, purpose. and destiny. destiny. We, we utilize these words interchangeably, and sometimes when we should say purpose, we say destiny, and sometimes when we say destiny, we, we say purpose. We don't even really know what it is. We really don't really know what it is. We just think it's the same word, but it's not the same word. And we need clarity on what is purpose and what is destiny so we have an understanding of how to move and what, and what God has for us, okay? So the first thing is that you need to know about destiny. Everyone say destiny. Destiny. Destiny means your destination, all right? It means destination. So if I'm flying to Chicago, the destination is Chicago. That is your ending point. That's where you land. That's where you're going to end up, all right? When I stand with God, at the end of my life, and I'm looking at my life with God, and I'm looking at all that it came out to be, I'm looking at my destiny. It is the end result. It is, it, it, once it's destined, that's it. Once it's destiny, that it is complete. There is nothing new you can do upon destiny. That's it, all right? Purpose is the road to your destiny. Purpose is the road. Purpose is the pathway, okay? But unfortunately, many people are not able to find purpose. Many people think they have purpose, but it's really, in fact, really isn't. And I really want to show you in the Word, and, and, and there's so much that I'm excited to share with you today. But unfortunately, many people are not able to find it. You can put up Matthew, verse 17, uh, Matthew 7, verse 13. I want to show you this real quick. Look at this. God is giving us, Jesus is giving us some, some evidence on what purpose is and what purpose really, really looks like, all right? Purpose, look at this. It says, he says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go by in it. And the reason why is because it's easy to do what you want to do. It's easy to take the easy way out. It's easy to settle. Everyone say settle. settle. It's easy to settle for mediocrity. It's easy to settle for, 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 the, for the easier thing that you can do in your own strength. To, to, to trust God, that's, that's difficult. To trust God, it, it, you know, it, it takes faith. It takes, oh God, I, I got a deadline coming up and you want me to give here. Oh my goodness, God, you, you, you want me to forgive this person? You want me to be loving to an individual that is treating me like hell this entire time? That takes faith. Okay. It right. takes faith. But what we don't understand is, is that behind that faith is your purpose. Uh, is your purpose. Uh, and many are not able to find it because it's so hard to do against what you want to do and trust God. All right. Okay? But look at this. It says, because narrow, everyone say narrow. Narrow, narrow is the gate and difficult. Ooh, it's hard. It is hard. And difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Now, I don't know where you've been and what you've done, but today you can, you can start in your purpose. 
today you can get some insight from God and say, you know what? Going into 2020, I want to live. I, I want to experience. I want to move and everything that you have for me. Because everything that God has for you is good. All right, all right. It's really good. Yeah. It's better than good. Amen. It is the desires of your heart. It is fulfillment like no other. All right. He wants to, to make you full. He wants to fill you up. And that is called fulfillment. All right. Yeah. Like no other. So I want to say this. Success, before I move on, I got to say a couple things. Success does not mean you're in your purpose. Being rich, having a lot of money, does not mean you're in your purpose. Otherwise, we wouldn't know anybody who was successful, and we wouldn't know anybody who was rich that is unhappy. There's plenty of rich people that are unhappy. There's plenty of successful people that are unhappy. So we automatically know being rich and having success does, it does not mean you're in your purpose. Right. Another thing that men get misconstrued that we think what purpose is, is we think that doing something that you like to do, doing something that, that you like to do, doesn't necessarily mean that you're in purpose either, okay? Purpose is deeper than that. Purpose is so much deeper than just the outward things, all right, that, that our society has watered down. And everybody thinks, you know, this is purpose or that is purpose, but it's not. Okay, can I really break down what purpose is? Yeah, Okay, let me break down what purpose is, all right? So, a few weeks ago, I don't know if it was a few weeks ago, it was probably a month ago, our refrigerator started acting up. Uh -oh. I mean, yes, it was a big, uh-oh. <laughs> it just started making all these noises, like beep, 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 beep. And it's happened before, and usually when it happens, if our refrigerator starts making this noise, it stops making the noise within like maybe an hour. So we're like, all right, well, it's probably just gonna stop. It's gonna stop in an hour. So it's just beep, beep, beep. It's just, it's, it's kind of subtle, but it's annoying at the same time. So we were like, all right, it's gonna go away. So a few hours later, we left, we came back home, we walked in the house, and it's beep, beep. I'm like, my goodness, what is going on? The refrigerator. So we were both like, all right, you know what? We tried to figure it out. We couldn't figure it out. We, we did not know what to do. So we're like, you know what? Let's just, let's just unplug it. We'll leave it unplugged, and we'll get, you know, we'll make sure that, that it, it, it probably works once we plug it in. So we left it unplugged for some more hours. We came back, we plugged it back in, and it still goes beep, 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 beep. We were like, oh my goodness. I don't want, I, I mean, I'm like, this is, this is just irritating. This is just frustrating. So we were like really, really lost. So what we did was we looked inside the refrigerator and we found out the name of the company. We found out the name of the manufacturer. We found out the company who created this refrigerator because this manufacturer, this creator was the only one that knew how to solve the mystery with the refrigerator. Yeah. We didn't know what to do. So we contacted the manufacturer. We contacted the, the company who created this refrigerator and they told us exactly what to do. They actually sent someone out to fix our issue and our refrigerator is working now. Amen? Yeah. Yes. No more noises. <laughs> but how, what happened to our refrigerator has a lot to do with understanding your purpose. You see, you are a creation. You are, you are a human being. And you were created. Okay? So in order for you to really understand where you are in your life and where you're going, if you feel lost, as we feel lost with our refrigerator, the only way to really find out what's going on in your life is to contact your manufacturer. Yeah. All right. Is to talk to the one who created you. Right. He is the only one that can tell you what to do in your life. He is the only one that can give you direction on why you're here. He has this entire manual that is in this Bible right here. And it's a self-help book on how to solve the annoying things that are going on in your life, like that refrigerator. And he can show you what to do and give you direction on what to do. He is the one. So understanding first that your purpose is understanding that you are created. You know, the thing is, let me, let me say this. We don't like to admit this, but I love talking to people. I always say this all the time. That you know, proclaim that they're atheists or they don't believe there's a God because I always catch them slipping. I, they, they, I always catch people slipping when they, when they say they don't believe in God. I just have a conversation with them, just let them talk. And all of a sudden, they start talking about purpose. Oh, well, hold, hold on, hold on, uh -uh. If you If you believe there's purpose, then you have to believe there's a God because purpose simply means is that everything is intentional. Everything is pre-planned. Everything has been set aside for you. So if you believe that there's purpose, you have to believe there's a God. Otherwise, everything is by coincidence. Everything is by coincidence. 
The fact that you like to draw, the fact that you like to sing, the fact that you like to dance, the fact that you're analytical, the fact that you like mystery movies, the fact that you love counseling people, the fact that, that you, you, know, you just love you know, being, being the life of the party. All these things have to be coincidences. They're just all big coincidences. Our DNA, the, the, the perfect code that looks like someone just coded us, oh, that's just a big coincidence. All of this is just a big coincidence if you don't believe in God. But that's just not the case. Purpose is all around us. Human beings crave in our inner core something. We crave to be long. We crave to know. We crave to do something great. That, my friends, is evidence that there is a creator. Come on. Amen. Because we all know that we're meant for something more. We all know that there's something on the inside of us that we're supposed to do. And that is purpose. That is purpose. You can, have, you can be rich, you can have a lot of money, but when you are not connected to your purpose, when you feel like there's something on the inside of you that you're not doing, that there's a disconnection, that you're not really living the life that you want to live, that you're not being who you were created to be, all of a sudden, there's different issues that happen on the inside of you. And we go to all these different you know, sources to find out who we are, and we're missing it. You've got to start with the creator. You have to go to him and he'll show you who you are. He'll show you what he's called you to do. Not only will he show you who you are and not only will he show you what he's called to do, what you're called to do, but he'll also open up the doors for you to do it. All right. Amen. 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 I mean, that's amazing. He's not just going to show you who you are. He's going to open up the door for you to do it. That's why I love God. Let me give you this definition. Of what is purpose? It's not on the screen, so don't look on the screen. All right. Um, <laughs> some of y'all like it's not there. Sorry. Uh, this is purpose. Look at this. Purpose is walking on the road God prepared for you. Purpose is doing and being. Everyone say being. being. That's identity. We're going to get into that today. Purpose is doing and being. Everything that God intended for you. I'm going to say this again. This video will be up by, hopefully it'll be up by Tuesday. So you're going to have to watch this again. This going to be a lot of stuff today. It's going to be so much stuff. It's just so much. You have to meditate on one. Because a lot of stuff I'm going to say to you, I'm going to keep going. And it's going to hit you. But you have to watch it again to the, you know, in the next couple of days. And just, okay? okay? So, I'm going to say it again. Purpose is walking on the road. God prepared for you. Purpose is doing and being everything that God intended for you. Look at Jeremiah 29, 11. Look at this. Jeremiah 29, 11. Whew, this excites me. I say, I've said this to you so many times, but this excites me. Look at what God is saying to you. For I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and plans to give you a future. I want to let you know that you have nothing to worry about because God has a plan for you. He has a plan for, for, for you this week. He has a plan for you next week. He has a plan for your bills. He has a plan for your relationships. He has a plan for your, for your health concerns. He has a plan for everything in your life, okay? God has a plan for you. You don't have to worry about nothing. So let me, let me say this. If God has a plan for you, then that means he has things that are set aside for you. Yes. If God has a plan for you, then that means there's something that he's ordained just for you. That he's laid apart something just for you. So that means that we don't have any competition in our purpose. All right. This is my next point. All right. All right. <laughs> this is deep. This is deep. Deep. That means, and I've been testing with this this year, because I do some people with folks in the job situation that I work at, you know, and it was almost like, you know, it, 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 like competing against me. The guy was like, no, you don't have to worry about that. You just love them. You don't have to worry about that. What I have for you is what I have for you. Yeah. You don't have to hate on them. You don't have to outshow them. You don't have to give them an attitude because they're trying to take your position. Don't worry about it. You just do you, love them, and trust me. What I have for you is what I have for you. I literally got tested, my wife knows, just last week. Just last week. I can't give it to them because they're probably watching. Um, <laughs> they're like, dang, that's Brother, talk about me. <laughs> I'm not going to say no names. I do a lot of different stuff. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, let me say this. There's no competition in your purpose. Isn't that amazing? 
That means you don't have to be jealous of anybody. Come on, come on, man. You don't have to envy anybody. You do not have to compare yourself to anybody. You don't have to compete against anybody. Because when you start walking in your purpose, there's a fulfillment that you get that is second to, to no other. There's a fulfillment in your purpose that is perfect for you. It has been prepared for you. God knows exactly what you like. God knows the desires of your heart. God knows where you, where you want to live. God knows how you want to think. God knows what you like to do. And let me yeah. tell you right now, he is good. Yeah. He is really good. Yeah. So don't worry about anybody, people that try to compete against you, people who try to get in your head, people who try to show off in front of you. You just let them show off because <laughs> God has the best thing in the world for you. All right. Okay? Amen. 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 All right. Now, that was the appetizer. Can we get into the main dish, please? Well, yeah. All right. How's appetizer? Look, I'm going to hurry up real quick. It was appetizer. Okay. Here we go. The chips, chips and sauce is good, right? Okay. Here we go. Let's get into this. Genesis 1.28. We're going to get into the main dish right there. Genesis 1.28. Whoo! My goodness. That's what I've been waiting for. Then God, this, okay. If you are lost today, first of all, today we're talking about step one is you have to understand that God has your purpose prepared. He has your purpose prepared. This is going to relieve you of a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of just worry. You understand, okay, God, you have a plan for me. I don't got to worry no more. I'm free. There's a joy that I can have now. There's a peace that I can have about my family because I trust you, God. You have the, you have the best intentions for everything that concerns me. I don't have to carry nothing no more. That's peace. That's freedom. That's joy. He created you not to carry the burden. He created you to know that he's daddy. He wants you to be a child. I know we're adults, but he wants you to be a child. He wants you to learn how to walk as a child, live as a child. Daddy always takes care of his child. That's right. No matter where you come from, no matter what you've done, your mistakes don't disqualify you. Because you haven't done this or done that doesn't make your father not want to give you something. Come on. All right, speak. Your daddy wants to bless you. Your daddy wants to hug you. Your daddy wants to love you. He wants to, when, when the world beats you up, he wants to comfort you. He doesn't want you to run away from him when the world rejects you and, and, and try to do something else to try to make yourself feel better. No, he wants you to come to him. He's your father. He's your dad. He protects you. He's jealous for you. He wants the best for you. He longs for you. Look at this. Then God blessed them. This is the original, original purpose for mankind. Look at the original purpose. Whew. Then God blessed them. Who's blessed today? Amen. I want to start right there. There's a blessing in your life. When you get reconnected to this, there's a blessing on your life. People, well, I'm not speak fast. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful. Woo! Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. My goodness. Many of you, this is about the blessing, about the blessing. We're about to break down some things right now that I've never heard before. I'm excited. But, but before we do that, I want to tell you about the blessing. There's a blessing on your life. Many of you, this is so God, many of you have been waiting for breakthrough. You've been waiting for breakthrough in your, with your finances, and you've been waiting for breakthrough in certain opportunities, jobs, careers, relationships that you're believing for. You're, you've been waiting for your breakthrough, looking and waiting for your breakthrough. This is what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, when you start walking in your purpose, the breakthrough will be there waiting for you. Mm, I'm, 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 I'm. I'm going to say it again. You are waiting for all these things to happen. God is saying, no, 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 just focus on getting on my purpose. Mm -hmm. When you get into my purpose, you will walk and run into your breakthrough. Yeah. Wow. Amen. We started, listen, there are things that my, my wife and I, Pastor Mark, we've been waiting for seven years. Seven years for breakthrough with family. Some of y'all know. Extreme breakthrough with family. We have been waiting for years since we got married with our finances. We've all, we always just struggled and with our finances. We've had good moments, and then all of a sudden we're just struggling. And we got used to just like this pattern of like we'll have this, like a little good season, and then we start struggling all over again. We've been waiting for breakthrough with our finances. We've been waiting for breakthrough with certain things in our marriage. We've been waiting on certain breakthrough with other things. And I'm telling you right now, all of it happened when we stepped out and we started Purpose Place. Amen. We have been waiting. 
And God was like, no, 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 no. You just get into my purpose and do what I called you to do. Yes, it's scary. Yes, it's difficult because you got to trust me and not, and not you. And so once we stepped out and we started purpose place, oh my goodness, so many breakthroughs have happened. It is ridiculous. Amen. It's almost like they were waiting in this net. And God said, now that you're in your purpose, things are breaking. Things with career, things with entertainment, things that I've been dreaming of for 10 years it has broken. Yes. Has broken. Right. Matt, you know. Matt knows. Right. He knows I'm playing. Has broken. <laughs> things that we've been believing for have broken. And it's not by coincidence. It's because we step into our purpose and supernatural favor has been released. And if you are here today at Purpose Place. And you are connected to Purpose Place. And as you tap into your purpose, I'm telling you that supernatural favor is falling on you right now yeah. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you believe that, we're seeing it right now. We're seeing it right now. Supernatural favor is released on you right now. I'm not hyping you up. I'm telling you this is the truth. Amen. Supernatural favor. A lot of you guys have been expecting disappointing things to happen. You've been expecting disappointing things to happen because disappointing things keep happening. Every time I get really, really happy about something, then there goes the disappointment. So that means when I get really, really happy, I can't really, really stay happy because I'm expecting the disappointment. Mm -hmm. So I can really, really never have joy. Because in the back of my head, something bad is about to happen. I break that in the name of Jesus. I break it in your lives in Jesus' mighty name. As a man of God, I, I break that in the name of Jesus. That things this year are going to get better and better and better and better. And when you say, man, this has gotten really, really good, it's going to get better again. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And I'm not saying, this is what I'm not saying by that. Don't confuse me. I'm not saying that nothing bad is going to happen. I'm saying that in the midst of the disappointment, you are so in purpose, you can, you, you, you're growing from this, you're growing from that, you're getting more faith, you're getting more character, God is humbling more, but you're still moving and moving and moving and moving and moving. I'm not saying that this year has been easy. This year has been one of the hardest years of my life and my wife's life, but it's been the, one, it's been the best year of our life at the same time. Because God has to take you through a process. But in that process, God is taking you from glory to glory, yeah. faith to faith. And I'm telling you, it, you don't have to fear any bad thing happening anymore. All right. Speak. I don't Speak. blame the devil Speak. for anything. The devil, the devil lost. Right. The devil lost. Right. The enemy is attacking. The enemy is attacking. The enemy is lost. The enemy is The enemy is defeated. Amen. Enemy is defeated. Amen. And this is somebody who is seen in the spiritual realm. And I've seen demons a million times in my bedroom alone especially in the last few years, and they're defeated. All I gotta say, when I see one of those demons flying around in my room, all I, this has happened, okay? Demons are real, and angels are real too. And when I see one of those things flying around my room, my wife knows, I wake up, I see a little thing flying, and Jesus said, get out now. That thing goes every time. I'm used to it now. I'm used to seeing things now. And God has opened up my spiritual awareness and where I, I, see, I see things all the time. And as soon as I see it in my kitchen or something, I see something pass by me, in the name, did I just see a black? In the name, get up now. Amen. And we're just going to continue what we're doing. We're going to think about it. All right. So I want to talk about this because this is, I, I got to get, get this out. God said be fruitful. Everyone say fruitful. fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply. I've got to break down for you right now what being fruitful really is. Right. The Lord showed me that the fruit that we think he's talking about right here, we have it all wrong. This is what the Lord is talking about by being fruitful. He gave a command to Adam, which I will back up in a, in a little bit, and he's given, the command never changed. And Jesus came to restore the commandment that God gave at the beginning of time. He restored it because we forgot, or not we didn't forgot, we just, we just didn't know. This is what being fruitful really, really means. John 15, verse 5, look at this. Mm -hmm. I thought being fruitful was just like, you know, just, just you know, Actually, I don't know what I'm saying right now. Um, <laughs> but, but I thought fruitful was just a lot. I thought, I thought fruitful was just a lot, of, a lot of other stuff. I thought it was actually the same fruit. I thought it meant spiritual fruit. I thought it meant spiritual fruit of what it says in Galatians. Um, in Galatians, it talks about you know, the fruit of the Spirit and about patience, love, joy, and all that. But it's, this is not what he's talking about. Go to John 15, verse 5, please. So he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, 
You will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so that you will be my disciples. What is fruit? What is fruit? If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. The first thing that I want you to know is that wherever you're starting right now, all right, we're talking about God has your purpose prepared today, all right? You have to first know that the first step is that you have to abide, learn to connect to your manufacturer. You have to connect to your manufacturer. You have to connect to your creator. Once you do that, there's gonna be a oneness that happens with you and God, all right? He wants you to abide. Abide is it? hey Jesus, how you doing? All right, peace. That's not abiding, okay? Abiding is God, I'm here. Walk with me today at my job. Walk with me today with my family. I wake up, I start my day with you. God, I need you today. Show me who you are. Father, just, just give me the words to say to this person. Help me out in this area. I need wisdom. Give me Amen. wisdom, Father. Give me Amen. wisdom to do this. Give me the strength to carry this burden. Amen. Father, give me the peace to go through this. I need you. You are inviting him to live life with you. You are living life with him. You are walking life with, with him. Not just on Sunday. You are, he's, he's a part of your life. He says, but this is the second thing. He says, abide in me. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. That means that when you start opening up this Bible, asking God to show you where, how, where to speak to you, how to speak to you, and his words get on the inside of you, something changes your life. When you start getting scriptures in this Bible, all in you, and you start reading the scriptures over your life, over your family's life, something powerful, powerful happens. He says, you will ask what you desire. What? What does fruit got to do when you ask it? What does fruit have to do with you asking God for anything? Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about asking God? What is this? Okay. You will ask, hold on, look at this. You will ask what you desire? Okay, never seen that before. That has to do with fruit, God? Okay. And it shall be done for you? Hmm, okay. By this, my Father is glorified? Wait, wait, wait. So when I pray and things are, things are coming to fruition, what I pray, now God is glorified? Mm -hmm. Well, what does this mean, Lord? He says that you bear much fruit. That you bear much fruit. So fruit means that I speak something, I pray something, and it happens. That's fruit. Amen. Which means God wants to be glorified through your prayer life. God wants to move on the things that you desire. Mm. God, I thought you were mean. <laughs> I thought you were stingy. I thought you wanted me to go through this. I thought you wanted me to have this pain. That's the devil lying to you. That's right. God, I thought, I'm asked, I've already asked for too much. I only deserve this. I can't expect you to do all of that. I'm good with just this little portion. Mm. But something happened. I'm going to read this again. Read this again. I want you to get this. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. You're going to ask what you desire. Let me tell you what's going to happen. You see, before, I would go to God, and I would say, God, please help me. Help me. I need more money. I need help. And I would just start begging him. But then, I got into his word. I found out in his word that he already said I could have the money. I got in his word. And he already said he wanted to be a blessing to my family. I got in his word, and he said that I'm the head and not the tail, that I'm above and not beneath. Then I went to Mark 11, 24, and it says that if you ask anything, believe that you receive it and it is yours. That's what it says in the word, Jesus, to everybody. So wait a minute. So I'm in his word now, and I'm finding out that it's already been given to me. And as I'm in the word, there's a transformation that is happening with my heart and my mind where now I know, wait a minute, you're not a stranger. You're my father. There's a transformation happening because I'm in the word that, that, no, you're my father. And I talk to my father differently than I would talk to a stranger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To a stranger, I would ask, hi, can you please help me? Can you, I, I need directions. To my father, God, dad, I need some directions. Can you, can you show me what to do? 
It's a different boldness when I'm talking to my dad, whether opposed to when I'm talking to a stranger on the street. We talk to God like he's a stranger on the street because we're not abiding in him. And because we're not abiding in him, there's a disconnect happening. God's over there, I'm over here. So I got to talk to God like he's a stranger. God, help me. Help me do this. I'm, I need, you, you start, start, start just requesting all these different things as a stranger. And Jesus is saying, I'm about to give you some secrets right now. I'm about to show you how I get results. Because when you read about Jesus, you see him, you see the harvest happening, multiplication yeah. happening, you see yeah. blind eyes opening, you see yeah. death, and death start, people starting to hear, you see miracles, and Jesus is like, let me give you some insight on why I see results. Uh-huh. Let me give you some insight. Uh-huh. Because Jesus had had to abide, although he's a 100% man and 100% God, when he came here, he said, what I do, y'all gonna do even more, but you gotta do what I did. And I gotta I abide with my father, you gotta abide with the father. If you abide with the father, I'm telling you right now, you're gonna start asking differently. You're gonna start talking differently. Now when I go to God about my finances, I don't beg him. He's my dad, he already said I can have it, so I say, Father, I thank you. I don't even ask anymore. Father, I thank you that you are bringing finances into my life. I thank you that you're opening up doors from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I thank you. That I'm expecting breakthrough this morning in the name of Jesus. I thank you that death has to go in Jesus' name. I thank you that the spirit of poverty is broken out of my life in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because I am your son. You want me to live like I am rich, like I am wealthy in my mind and in my heart and the way that I live my life. I am a son of the most high God. I demand in the name of Jesus breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. Because I'm abiding in him. And then when breakthrough starts happening, oh my God, that's when the fruit starts coming in your life. Now, I'm about to give you some insight on this one right now, but I was almost right around my house. You start having fruit in your life. God gave a command to Adam at the beginning of time. He said, be fruitful and multiply. I always thought being fruitful was just like, all right, well, I guess you have a good time and, you know, see, see some fruit. I don't know. God was telling Adam, you're going to speak and things are going to happen. Be fruitful. Speak things and watch it happen in front of you. Be fruitful, Adam. Be fruitful, Eve. I've made you in my image. Let me tell you who was the first fruitful person that we see in the scripture. It is God. In the beginning, he said, let there be light and light happen. That's fruit. God said, let the fruit go here. Let the earth, let the waters do this. Let the ocean do this. Let the moon and the stars. That's fruit. God wants you to live a life where you're speaking things and you start to see things happen in your life. Now, here is the second, and I promise you I'm not, I'm not lying about this. Here's the second thing that I guarantee was going to happen. See, that's not, that's not the part of it. That's not the whole thing. He said, be fruitful and multiply. You can only see multiplication happen in your life if first you experience fruit. If you do not see fruit in your life, we should go multiply. Nothing. We should go multiply. You can only have multiplication if you have some fruit. All right, that's right. So that means. I'm going to do this. Look at this. Let me show you what multiplication really is that I've never seen before. I want you to go to this. This is Matthew 5, verse 15. You guys want to see what multiplication is? Yeah. Look at this. Um, what in the world? Is that Robert? Okay, that's a. Is that fine with you? All right, I'm at this spot. Let me, let me show you. That's, that's not it. But let me show you what Matthew 5.15 is. My bad. Matthew 5.15, Jesus says, Let your light shine before men, that they may see, I want to say see, see. your good works, your good and glorify your Father in heaven. So Jesus is saying, let your light shine before men. Jesus never said, get a, get a picket pick a sign. You're going to go to hell. You're going to go to hell. Believe in Jesus or burn. There you go. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus didn't put the sign down, brother. It's okay. Jesus never said that. He said, do what I did. Did I ever do that? We call it witnessing. Did Jesus ever have to witness to people? No, Jesus did not have to witness to people. You know what Jesus did? Jesus had fruit. Yeah. He walked with fruit. Mm. And hungry people go after the fruit. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. 
So God is saying, be fruitful and multiply. Let me tell you where the multiplication comes from, okay? When you have fruit in your life, people are going to walk by you and they're going to say, what is that? I'm hungry. I'm looking for fulfillment. I'm looking for direction. And you're different. I see blessings in your life. I'm seeing God restore your marriage. I'm seeing God bless your kids. You used to be mean. Now you want to have a smile on your face everywhere you go? I want some of that. Hmm. What's, your, what's going on? What you doing? What you doing? Let me tell you what multiply is. I haven't got to multiply yet. Yes, that's, that's the start of multiply. Multiply is you go to that person and say, man, Jesus, I had to take, I took it to the next level. I gave my heart into some things that I wasn't doing. And, and as I surrendered my heart and surrendered my things to God, I see God blessing me here, blessing me there. I'm telling you the word that I am getting is changing my life. And then that person says, I want that. Amen. So then you say, all right, let me pray for you right now. You pray for that person. And all of a sudden, they start receiving fruit as well. Amen. Yeah. Now they have fruit. Because you prayed for them, and now their marriage is getting better. You prayed for them, and now they used to be sick, and now they're healed. You prayed for them, and now they used to be anxious all the time, and now they have peace all of a sudden. Amen. You prayed for them, and they're experiencing fruit. Everyone say fruit. fruit. And because you have your fruit, and now they have your fruit, that's multiplication. Yeah. Yeah. So multiplication is, you just said, it isn't just about your life. We are blessed. I'm blessed. I don't talk to nobody. No, that's not, that's not the whole commandment. No. The first part is being fruitful. The next part is multiplication. So what's going on in your life, you got to lead other people to get the same results. Amen. 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 Woo! Right. This is like, I'm so God said, fully, fully, I got to take you to another level. Yep. This is a whole, I've never preached like this before. I've never in my life. Is this on video? I've never preached like this in my life. I'm gonna look at this video. Come, tomorrow morning, I'm about to look at this video. Like, what, what happened? What happened? My God. So you guys understand fruit now. Fruit is you seeing what you pray for happen. That's fruit. Multiplication is seeing what happened in your life and other people's lives. Okay? God said at the beginning of time, be fruitful and multiply. All right? But the next thing that he does is he says, if you go back to uh, 1 verse 28, I want to do this. He says, then God bless him and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, this is Genesis 1 verse 28, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion, everyone say dominion. Dominion. Dominion over, over what God? Over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So that's the next part. God has called you to be fruitful in 2020. God has called you to have multiplication where you start seeing other people around you get the same results that you did. And then the third thing is God wants you to walk in something called dominion. Everyone say dominion. Dominion, dominion is a part of identity. It is a part of the very concept of purpose. Because purpose is not only walking on the road that, that, that God has for you, but it's also doing, which is fruit, you know, fruit, multiplication, and being, being is identity. So being has to do with you knowing who you are in God. You knowing the power that you have. You knowing what that what you hold in, you know in the spirit. And so being is a part of your authority. And so dominion, I'm gonna say dominion. dominion. Dominion is connected to the word authority. Because authority means that you have legal right, you have legal position over a situation. All right? I'll give you an example. This is happening, I don't know if it's, maybe it just happened to me. Okay. But I had a phone call not that long ago, and I was on the phone, I was talking to this company. And the employee was tripping. Just, I mean, just talking to me crazy, and I don't know what was going on. And I said, whoa, 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 hold on. I need to talk to your manager. Can I talk to your manager, please? So she was like, all right, fine. So they put the manager on the phone. And I requested the manager because the manager has the legal right to change my situation. Yeah. The manager, not the employee, yeah. has the legal right to make me happy. Because I can't deal with the employee. I need to deal with the manager who can change this around for me, okay? God has said at the beginning of time, I have not called you to be an employee of the earth. I called you to be a manager. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. Wow. That means you have legal right to change the situation when you speak. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. You have the legal right to see things happen because he's given you authority. I'll give you an example since you don't believe me. I suffer from depression. 
It was a really deep, really deep depression. Some of you guys know the story. It was for months. It was probably like six months. It was the hardest thing. I mean, I would come to church, this old church I was going to, and I would be smiling, I would be happy, and then as soon as I would leave, I would get in my car when I got along to drive home, and this thing would come upon me and hug me. I felt so low. I, I had a fear of the future. I had a fear of failure. I had a fear that I was going to die. I had all these disheartened thoughts that kept me not smiling. Every time I would get happy, I would always have these thoughts. Well, as soon as you leave here, you're going to go right back into your depression. So you, you shouldn't even enjoy it now. Mm. So it was this, this, this thing that was making me believe that I was always going to be a slave to this depression. Most people are on medication. Most people have, have therapists, all great. But God wanted to show me something. And through a man of God, he pointed me to the Bible. And he said, you have dominion. You have authority. Let me, let me, let, let's do this. He said, every single time, that spirit of depression, because he, he said, you think it's you. It's not you, that's the demon. It's the demon, it's not you. Because you, you can't fight the battle against yourself. So if you think it's you, you're never gonna have victory. You're never gonna have victory if you think it's you. But when you understand that God didn't create me like that, he said, be fruitful, he said, multiply and have dominion. So if, I'm, so if something's going on with me, that means something else is going on. It's not God, okay? So what happened was is that I took dominion and, and, and I said, every time I would, the, the spirit would come upon me, I would get into the book of Psalms and I would start praising the Lord and I would start thanking him. I started thanking him for joy and peace and I would start reading these scriptures and it just started breaking off of me. And more and more I would do this, it would break off more and more and more and more. And within, I would say about two weeks, I was completely free. Amen. I was completely free. I had joy again. I had peace again. And it would try to come back on me from time to time randomly. It would try to come back like once every, every three weeks or something like that. But every time it would come back on me, I would get my Bible and I would start speaking the joy scriptures and Psalms. I would start reading the scriptures with joy. Although I felt depressed, although I felt heavy and anxious, I would have a smile on my face and I would do it by faith. And I would say, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. And I would start just reading these scriptures. And every time I would do that, it would break off. You see, because I have dominion. Amen. And so that spirit had to leave until I was completely free. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to end with this. This is Genesis um, <clears throat> Genesis 2, verse 15. Can, can, I'm going to end with this real quick. Everyone say, God has it prepared. God has it prepared. Next week, we're going to talk about how to unlock what God has prepared. All right. All right. Yeah, you gotta come back. You gotta come back. For, come back for next week. I'm just telling you, God has it prepared. Okay, this is the good news. You don't have to worry about anything because God has it prepared. But next week, we're gonna say, okay, well, how can we get the key, open it up, so that we can enter in into what God has prepared? Amen. So it says, this is what God did after He told Adam and, and Eve to be fruitful. It says, or at, uh, Adam be fruitful. He says, then the Lord God took the man and He put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. He put the man there. But it says that God took the man and he put him in the garden. God in this season wants to take your heart. If you can give him your heart, he's able to put you in your garden of Eden. Amen. You have a garden of Eden. That is the place he's created for you. That's where your purpose is. You have it, your own garden, but he needs your heart. If he can take your heart, he can put you where he wants to put you, okay? And it says, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. I won't say die. die. Although God has it prepared, there's always going to be a tree, a knowledge of good and evil that is there. What I'm saying to you is, is that there's always going to be temptation that is waiting for you in your purpose. It's going to be there. Although you are blessed, although you are experiencing breakthrough, you have to pass by this tree of temptation every day. Every day. You think, oh, I'm in my purpose now. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Everything's just going to be flowers and berries and fruit. No. There's going to be some stuff there too, okay? But God wants you to always be dependent on him. So every time you see this tree of temptation, you say, God, I need you. I need you. That way you're always connected to him. You're always connected to him. He doesn't want you to get, he doesn't want you to get too comfortable so then you think you're God. Verse 18, it says, and the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And out of the ground, every bird of the air, well, I'm going to stop right there. Can you guys stand up? We're going to close up right now. All right. Verse 19, I want you to miss this. I know this is the last thing, but I still want you to, to look to, to, okay, here it is. Very important. He says, out of, the, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, 
And he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever, whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. That is called fruit. Everyone say fruit. fruit. Adam spoke over the Adam. Adam spoke over the animals. Whatever he spoke over the animals, that's what it was. That was Adam exercising being fruitful. Okay? The multiplication has to come next. Because every single time there's fruit, always has to be multiplication. And it says, but for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Time to multiply now. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. Now he's abiding with him. Now God is abiding with Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and he closed up the flesh in its place. Because God, because Adam is resting, everyone say resting. resting. He's not anxious. He's not panicking. Because he's resting with God, God was able to take something from the inside of him out. In this season, if you can rest with God, meaning that you can abide with him, knowing that there's nothing that's going to come against you, you have to worry about nothing. He's able to put his hands on the inside of you and take out things out of you so that you can multiply. So he calls them in verse 22. It says, then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. I want you to understand that God is, has brought everything to Adam. God brought the animals to Adam. God put them in the garden. Now God is bringing Eve to him. Eve can mean anything. Eve can mean anything that you're desiring. Eve is your help. Eve is the provision. Eve represents, again, relationships, but Eve also represents community. Everyone say community. Because God said it's not good for him to be alone. I want to end with this. He has it prepared for you. He has a community come, uh, uh, prepared for you. You cannot execute the purpose of God without community. You need help. You can't, he ain't called you to be a Lone Ranger. You need people to encourage you, to pray for you, to be there for you. He's not called you to be alone. Amen? Amen. You need community. God already has it prepared for you. And he's doing something great. And this has been a blessing to you. Can you guys give a shout of praise, please? Yeah. I want to pray for you real quick. Can you guys close your eyes and bow your heads, please? My first invitation is, is that if you haven't, you've never allowed Jesus to just come into your heart. Maybe because you thought you had to be a certain way or live a certain way or act a certain way or you thought you weren't good enough. And you've never made the decision or into your heart to invite him into your heart. I just want you to raise your hand. It's between me and you. Me and you. You want to raise your hand. So I'm going to pray a general prayer, but I just want to know so we can be in agreement. If that's you. Thank you, Lord. I'm also going to ask you to lift up your hands if, if, if you've been in a season where you've been a little lost and you're trying to figure out things about your life, that you know that there's something on the inside of you, but you don't know, you haven't known what to do. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. Thank you, Lord. I see, I see your hands. I, I see your hands. We're going to pray this prayer as we close. Everyone say, Jesus. Jesus. I believe. That you, that you are my Father. I receive you into my heart to be my Lord and to be my Savior. Father, I believe that 2020 is going to be my breakout year. In Jesus' name, I invite the power of the Holy Spirit to baptize me to fill me, to, fill to, me, make, me to make me full with your power, with your power. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. I thank you, I thank you. that I'm walking in my purpose, in my purpose. Now. now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. No, more no more waiting, now, now. in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Woo. Thank you, Lord.
Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Yes, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Purpose Place Church. And also, you guys can catch us on Instagram. We go live every Sunday yes. morning at 11 a.m. Yes, hey, we got a new video coming out every single week. We'll see you soon.